talk more about pre premature ovarian failure and what the uh, causes or potential causes are. So I think that this is probably one of the most frustrating things about premature ovarian failure is that uh, it's really hard to get what the cause of it is. And especially so because there's not really much treatment options either. So doctors can be kind of unhelpful and then you just have this huge bomb of a diagnosis to deal with. Um, but I wanted to talk about what some of the potential causes could be. So sometimes there's a pretty direct cause like um, toxins can be a cause for premature ovarian failure and in, in that way it can be direct or indirect because like there's some toxins such as those from chemotherapy and radiation um, many cancer patients do experience premature ovarian failure or I shouldn't say many but many people who have premature ovarian failure did get it from a cancer treatment um, and you know as part of that they'll provide some treatment before going into cancer treatment to help um, with fertility preservation. So anyways, that is uh, a cause. But then there's a lot of other toxins in our world um, that could potentially be linked to premature ovarian failure. They just don't know of any direct link. So that's something I think about a lot if um, that's something that people should be more concerned about as far as what chemicals are getting into our bodies um, and how that could affect not only ourselves but you know generations down the line and our population as a whole. Um, something interesting to think about but also kind of scary to think about given um, how prevalent chemicals are in life you know like from what we cook with and eat out of uh, to what's in our food as far as preservatives, pesticides, all that stuff. So just a really big topic to think about. Um, the, the next cause is a chromosomal abnormality. Um, so that can be something like Turner syndrome or fragile X syndrome. Um, so while, you know, you still get the same like devastating diagnosis, at least you have um, an actual um, diagnosis and cause for what what that is um, and they can kind of pinpoint it and it's objective and that's you know it's it's hard to know but at least it's nice to like actually have reasoning for it um, the next thing is autoimmune and this is what my doctors have told me actually it's that it's an autoimmune thing which is like autoimmune it's like yes that is something but it's also pretty vague because they're just you know the tissues are attacked by your immune system and it's like well why is that like you know and get to get something more there but um you know that's interesting and something to know that it's autoimmune and then with autoimmune stuff they can um look for other um, autoimmune issues that might be going on so it's not nothing but it's also not super specific um then then the next most major um cause they say of premature ovarian failure is unknown causes so something that occurs spontaneously and not related to anything else that they can determine um so that's um you know just something that people that are diagnosed with infertility premature ovarian failure are contending with is that um, not only is there no treatment but the causes are really unclear so um, just something I wanted to talk about and see um, if if you have been diagnosed with premature ovarian failure if you could let me know what your doctor said was the cause um, I'm just I'm interested in this like if um, maybe in the future they'll be able to find out more links for why this happens and maybe that could help um, lead to prevention or treatment something like that um, I just wanted to, to share about that and um, get the conversation topic out there um, please if you like my videos please subscribe to follow along um, like and comment all that stuff is super helpful uh, thank you so much for watching